Hello, my name is Tommy. Welcome to Borderline HR. This is a new channel dedicated to educating about borderline personality disorder and fighting the stigma that surrounds it. I've been diagnosed with BPD, CPTSD and severe recurrent depression 12 years ago and it's been a long time wish of mine to advocate for more awareness surrounding this disorder. In this first video, I want to give you a short introduction to the basics of borderline personality disorder and give my perspective on them. In the following ones, I will focus on specific issues and give my perspective on them as well. I want to give you a trigger warning for the topic suicide and self-harm here. I won't go into detail in any of these topics, but I'm going to have to mention them since they're a part of the symptoms of this disorder. So what is borderline personality disorder? Borderline personality disorder, or BPD for short, is a personality disorder characterized by a long-term pattern of unstable relationships, distorted sense of self, and strong emotional reactions. Those affected often engage in self-harm or other dangerous behavior. We also struggle with a fear of abandonment, a feeling of emptiness, and detachment from reality. Our symptoms can be triggered by events considered normal to others. Prevalence and mortality rates. The prevalence of borderline personality disorder is estimated to be 1 out of 100, but may be as high as 6 out of 100 people. It's about the same in men and women, and overall about 20% among psychiatric inpatients. 5 to 10% of the people affected by borderline personality disorder die by suicide. This rate is 50 times greater than that found in the general population. But the amount of failed suicide attempts is considerably higher, with a lifetime prevalence of 80%, 90% if the person suffering from BPD also suffers from depression. What are the diagnostic criteria for borderline personality disorder? So, as per the DSM-5, a pervasive pattern of instability of interpersonal relationships, self-image and effects, and marked impulsivity beginning by early adulthood and present in a variety of contexts, as indicated by five or more of the following. Frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. I nearly do everything to avoid abandonment. It's one of the worst feelings I've ever felt, if not the worst feeling I've ever felt. This leads to a certain state of hypervigilance for signs of impending abandonment. Here are a few examples of what triggers this primal fear myself, organized in ascending intensity from 1 to 10, 1 being just a little confusion and 10 being a full-blown mental breakdown. Someone I like is in a bad mood and I don't know why. That's 3 to 6 depending on how deeply I am connected with the person. Me noticing a change in behavior or writing style that isn't really comprehensible for me. That starts as a 4 and goes up till a 10. Believe me. <laughs> Leaving text conversations without saying goodbye. That's a 5. Unforeseen cancellations of appointments or plans. That's 6.5. Missing of anchor spots while in distress like an alternative date to meet up or a fixed time for the next talk. That's about... Yep, that's, that's a solid 8. Someone important to me doesn't return a sign of affection. That's 8.5 uh, with the potential to go up to 10 depending on the situation. You may have noticed that there's a whole lot of distress in not knowing the reasons behind behavior of others or in wondering about them, which is the reason why a good communication is even more important to keep relationships healthy and fulfilling for both involved. A pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating between extremes of idealization and devaluation. As a borderliner, my emotions are amplified by a factor of approximately times 10 which leads to me opening up to a new person I like very quickly. This often leads to forming a very close relationship with lots of contact, which leads to an increase in conflict potential, especially if these conflicts happen in the beginning of the relationship. When problems occur, I often feel into deep, which makes it very hard to keep my boundaries up, leave situations that are not good for me, calm myself down, give up on a person, and sometimes even to speak up. On the topic of idealization and devaluation, I typically don't realize when I'm idealizing someone, at least not while I'm doing it, I just notice how happy they make me, 
how much more energetic I feel, and how my thoughts keep circling back to them. So I do notice the hyperfixation, but I just don't fully realize the idealization going on. Since to me this feels so natural, it's easier for a person on the outside to recognize it than it is for me. As a result of the immense stress, fear, and pain involved in these conflicts, especially when they stay unresolved, the thought pattern changes and the positive impact from the idealization changes to its negative counterpart of devaluation. Identity disturbance, markedly and persistently unstable self-image or sense of self. I experience prolonged periods of time where I feel like I don't really know who I am, what makes me me, where I have problems with looking at myself in the mirror. Sometimes a lot of self-hatred and insecurities are involved. And yeah, it's not fun, guys. This may also lead to disturbed eating behavior. Impulsivity in at least two areas that are potentially self-damaging, e.g. spending, sex, substance abuse, reckless driving, or binge eating. This can happen for a whole lot of different reasons. For example, just to be self-destructive out of a parasuicidal mood, or to feel ourselves in periods of dissociation or high distress. Other examples would be extreme sports, hanging out with dangerous people, bringing ourselves in high-stress, dangerous situations. Recurrent suicidal behavior, gestures or threats, and self-mutilating behavior. Okay. Suicidal behavior and self-harm are most often seen as our main symptom since they appear the most drastic and are the most easy to recognize. But being reduced to a coping mechanism isn't fun. Not every borderliner cuts, not every person cutting themselves is a borderliner, but every person that self-harms needs help and to feel loved, respected and validated. The suicidal behavior is linked to the intense amounts of suffering and hopelessness a person with BPD is prone to feel. It's important to take any form of suicidal behavior or self-harm seriously, no matter the reasons. I put some links and numbers you can call if you or a loved one are experiencing suicidal thoughts, behavior or self-harm in the description. Affective instability due to a marked reactivity of mood, e.g. intense episodic dysphoria, irritability or anxiety, usually lasting a few hours and only rarely more than a few days. I've experienced both shorter phases of intense states of anxiety, pressure and depression, which last a few hours, as well as some that lasted over months. I'd say it really depends on the trigger and on the overall situation and if that stays unresolved. These tend to bring a state of deep depression or extreme hypervigilance with them. Chronic feelings of emptiness. To me, this fluctuates in its intensity, but it's always present in one form or another. Sometimes it's like a delicate, soft feeling of longing for a part of myself that's no longer there. And sometimes it feels like I have this world-ending black hole inside of me, consuming every little bit of happiness and myself. This is almost always accompanied by a state of deep, severe depression. Inappropriate or intense anger or a difficulty controlling anger, e.g. frequent displays of temper, constant anger, recurrent physical fights. Okay, rude. I wouldn't call our anger itself inappropriate, since it's an emotion that has its reasons to be there. But due to its intensity, it's really a challenge to control it sometimes, and this can lead to actions that can be considered extreme, over the top or inappropriate. This does not make us outright violent people, since we do have a conscience like everybody else has too. It's not possible to predict whether one particular individual with BPD will act violently just because of their BPD. My anger, for example, is mostly internalized or turned against myself, as I have a huge difficulty in expressing it, especially in the situations that make me angry, which links closely to the abandonment issues. Transient, stress-related paranoid ideation or severe dissociative symptoms. Dissociation is the experience of detaching from reality. Dissociation accompanies a feeling of daydreaming or being intensely focused, as well as the distressing experience of being disconnected from reality. In this state, consciousness, identity, memory and perception aren't naturally integrated anymore. 
Dissociation often occurs as a result of stress or trauma. If you experience any of these symptoms yourself, please don't hesitate to seek help, reach out and get a professional's guidance. I don't know where I'd be in my life if I hadn't started DBT therapy or even worse, never been diagnosed at all. DBT stands for Dialectic Behavioral Therapy and was developed by the absolute legend of a woman, Marsha Linen. <sighs> to me, borderline is the biggest challenge I've ever faced. It makes me susceptible to a, a whole lot of disappointment, suffering and despair. It takes up a lot of my time and energy to cope with and the stigma attached to borderliner is cruel at best. But it also gives me the ability to form connections with people that go way deeper than they otherwise could. It fuels my creativity. It makes me empathetic for the distress and pain of others because I've grown to know it myself so well. And it makes me want to help. I can feel everything and sometimes nothing. It's become a part of myself. It's a part of who I am. Yet I'm not borderline. I'm just Tony. Do you have any questions you'd like me to answer? Or borderline related topics you'd want me to cover? The comment section is yours. Please also don't forget to save the like and subscribe button from their respective feelings of abandonment. And see you next time. Be kind to one another.